Magandang uh, gabi po sa inyong lahat. Tayo po ay uh, mag-aaral patungkol sa Courts of Heaven. Noong nakaraang week, dalawang korte po ang ating pinag-usapan. Ang tawag, ang tawag ay the Court of Matrimony and the Court of Ecclesia. Bago tayo magpatuloy ng ating pong pag-aaral ngayong gabi, ay ating muna pong balik aral o review kung ano po yung ating napag-aralan last week. Sa Court of Ecclesia po ay isa po sa mga issue na pinagagawa sa atin is judging doctrinal issues. Katulad po doon sa Acts chapter 15 na nagkaroon po ng Jerusalem Council, pinag-usapan po doon yung mga yung doktrina na dapat na yung mga kasi po yung mga Gentiles na born again, ang issue doon ay kung sila po ay susunod doon sa mga batas uh, na ginagawa ng mga ordinary mga Hudyo. So, out of that Jerusalem Council, nag-decide sila doon sa mga doctrinal issue na yon. So, the problem is, when we judge doctrinal issue, at kung tayo ay may issue sa false teaching, we cannot judge rightly. Kaya, napag natin last week, kinakailangan dalhin mo doon sa court of ecclesia about this issue. Okay? Kasi, whether we like it or not, marami mga lumalabas na iba-ibang mga, ano, mga teaching na sabihin natin wala sa hulog eh. Sometimes may excesses or extreme. So that's the reason why to be safe, we will not be the one that will judge. We bring it into the court of Ecclesia. Second is when judging sin. We know the fact that the Lord has given the elders of the church or the fivefold ministry to judge sin within the church. But sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5, nakita natin doon, Paul is in the spirit. I believe he went to the court and asked for a specific judgment about the person who's doing a you know, immorality. Okay? So, ganun din sa uh, iglesia ngayon. When there is someone who made, who committed sin na ayaw mag-repent, kailangan dalhin mo ito saan? sa court of heaven ko anong gagawin kaya nga si Paul naka ng ano eh ng instruction sabi niya di ba uh, ibigay mo ito sa kaaway di ba para maligtas yung kanya ano kaluluwa and then pagdating sa second corinthians he encourages the corinthians to accept kasi nagrepent now most of our problem is kahit repentant yung, yung, yung tao na nagkasala, we still follow the same thing. Di ba? So, in judging sin, in the, in, in the congregations, in the body of Christ, kinakailangan ito ay ano, dalhin mo ngayon doon sa court of heaven. Yun yung ibig sabihin. No? Not na hindi mo siya i-judge, but you judge it based on what the court decides. Okay? And then, judging dispute among brethren. Madalas, it goes extreme. Bakit? Kasi, ang nangyayari ay yung kapatid na nagrabyado, instead ma-reconcile, they just go to the court. At ang sabi ni Paul, by bringing the case to the court, you already defeated already. Why? The enemy already had what? Accusation against you. Okay? And then, judging entities outside of the purposes of God. Kasi, may mga lumalabas. Example, itong si Kibuloy. Ang alam ko, ano yan eh? Four square yan eh. So, lumabas siya doon sa, sa doktrina ng four square. To the point na he claimed to be what? Appointed sons of God. Oh. So, yun ang, yun ang mabigat. So, how do you do that? How do you deal with that? I mean. So, If God does not ordain the existence of that particular group, eh bakit natin pinapayagan? Okay? Eh sabi ni Lord, Matthew 16, 18, I've given you authority, the keys of the kingdom. 
whatsoever you bind here on earth is already bound in heaven. So why is it that this group at iyong ibang mga kulto nag exist pa rin? Even though walang uh, imprimatur ang langit. It is because this group was able to get a legal right. The spirit behind this group was able to get a legal right. Kaya, uh, ganun, nag exist pa rin sila. Sa totoo nga, pag sino mo, mas mayaman pa sila. Sa totoo lang, mas, mas, may mas pera pa sila. Mas malalaki pa yung ministry nila. Kumpara dun sa mga totoo na mga nagmi-minister sa Panginoon. And then, obtaining the counsel of His will. That's the reason why tayo mga pastor nagpipreach. Why? We are educating and uh, equipping our people na ano, for them to understand and receive the counsel of His will. And we want them to walk in the will of God. Okay? And the best thing that you can do is you can bring it to the court of Ecclesia for him to see what, is, what was written in his book. Okay? So, we have to understand and we have to believe on the judicial system of God. He has, He make it more easier for all of us how we can live according to His will. Kasi nag-provide na siya ng korte doon sa langit. Hinihintay lang niya na tayo ay ano, mag-submit doon sa judicial system niya. Ano pa? The release of ministry fund and equipments. One of the problem in the ministry is very expensive ang mag-ministry. Hindi naman yan thank you and God bless you. Di ba? Meron kang mga babayaran, meron kang gagastusan, gagastusin. Even the people involved, you have to pay them. Okay? Because a laborer is worth your big sire. Now, uh, madalas, uh, forgive me for this, ah. karamihan mga pastor, ang, ang mindset nila is this. It is the congregation that would what? Provide them for the needs of the ministry. Kaya nga, ang focus nila, dumami ang miyembro para mas marami magbigay ng tithes. At mas maraming mayayaman, that would be better. Kasi mas marami ang magsusupport sa ministry. Mga kapatid, you you, you you miss the whole point. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, sabi niya, I've been blessed you with all spiritual blessing in the, in the realm of the Spirit. The blessing is in the realm of the Spirit. So in other words, you have to go to the courts of heaven to get the uh, funds and the equipments that you need in uh, doing the ministry na ipinagkatiwala sa iyo ng Panginoon. Ano pa? Removal of wrong personnel. One of the problem of the church is, of the leaders of the church is, when they make a mistake in putting someone in the ministry, ang hirap tanggalin. One of the reason is, may mga kamag-anak yon at ayaw natin magkaroon ng ano, uh, mm, breaking of relationship. Okay? Especially kung wala mang ginagawang mali yung tao. Nagkataon lang, he is the wrong person in the wrong position. Okay? So, how do you going to remove that? Bring it into the court of heaven. Ano pa? Obtaining the right personnel. Kung gano'ng ka-importante ang magtanggal, mas lalong importante yung mag-obtain ng right personnel. Papaano? You go to the court also. You ask God to open the books of the courts for you and ask for the personnel na nakalagay doon. At magugulat ka na lang. It can, God can even give you names of these people. At magugulat ka na lang. God is going to draw these people to your ministry because they are the right person in your ministry. Ano pa? Obt obtaining the right property for your ministry. Mga kapatid, God has allocated boundaries of nations. Same through with the church, with the ecclesia. He has provided us what? Property. So we can uh, fulfill the mandate of God. So in doing so, you go to the courts and ask for the property and ask for uh, uh, if that property is 
in Lien or the enemy has what we call false title. Oh. And then you ask the court for resources or funds to purchase the land. Okay lang kung ibibigay ng libre. Oh, pero kung hindi, you have to ask God for the funds to purchase the property. Now, another court is the court of matrimony. Reaffirmation, reaffirmation of marriage covenant. Kasi may mga covenants na ungodly covenants. Why? It was not the couple who made the covenants. It was prearranged. It was the parents who made the covenants. Kasi nga, may mga lugar pa dito sa Pilipinas na uso pa rin yung tinatawag na pinapractice pa rin nila yung arranged, prearranged marriages. So the problem of this uh, kind of marriage, later on, nagiging ano, walang, walang love, walang spark sa mag-asawa to the point na gihiwalay ang mga ito. Okay? So, if that person got born again, naging miyembro mo, it becomes your problem. Di ba? And how will you do it? So you need what? Reaffirmation of marriage covenant. Bring it into the courts of heaven. Okay? It must more easier rather than kahit pa you go through a lot of counseling, hindi mangyayari yan. Pabalik-balik lang yan. Bakit? There was what? A, a covenant. An ungodly covenant that was made. So bring it into the courts of heaven para manalify yung covenants at sila ngayon ay mag-establish ng bagong covenant at sila, I tell you, may inlove yun sa bawat isa. Pangalawa is the restoration of marriage covenant. This is naman, sa marriage covenant naman na ito ay naapektuhan ng infidelity. So, kapag nagkaroon ng infidelity, ay kinakailangan ano, magkaroon ng tinatawag na restoration. Okay? Kahit pada, padaani mo yun sa napakaraming counseling, until it's been restored in the courts of heaven, na-restore yung covenant lahat, pababalik-balik lang din yan. Okay? Next is annulment of marriage. Ang ibig sabihin po rito ng annulment of marriage is this. Pag yung mga, example, meron kami mga nangyari sa amin yan na, uh, na born again yung lalaki tsaka yung asawa. Yung pala, hindi pala sila ang tunay na mag-asawa. Kasi, uh, yung lalaki, hiwalay na siya doon sa kanyang original na asawa. So, nabornan din sila. So, anong gagawin mo? Sasabihin mo ba doon sa lalaki as an ako repentance o balik ka na lang sa dati mong asawa? Hindi, kasi may pamilya na eh. At yung asawa naman niya, may pamilya na din. So, how will you do that? Kaya madalas, yung mga member natin na ganoon, dala-dala natin yung problema na yan. Okay? Madalas merong conflict dyan. Okay? So, hindi mo man makasal. Bakit? They are not legally annul eh. Di ba? Or divorce. Ah, wala naman pala tayong divorce dito. So, nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na uh, uh, the burden is in the pastor. So, how will you do that? So, you annul the marriage in the court in heaven. Because sabi ng Bible, let, when, uh, sabi niya, ang sino mang pinagsama ng Diyos, huwag paghiwalayin ang tao. Tao, hindi pwede maghiwalay. Pero ang Diyos, pwede niyang paghiwalayin yan for whatever reason, if the marriage is unworkable. Okay? Kaya di ba may mga pagkakataon, yung isang partner na mamatay? So, hindi nyo ba alam na one of the reason is, is that workable anymore? O, kaya kukunin na ni Lord yung isa. So, may mga ganun mga cases. So, pag yung mga divorcee, yung mga na-divorce ng mga lalaki at babae, na-divorce sila o naghiwalay, let's put in the Philippine setting, naghiwalay sila, at nag-asawa sila uli, may problema. Kahit paligal yung paghihiwalay nila, meron pa rin silang tinatawag na yung sense of ownership, yung soul ties nila doon sa dating asawa, na andun pa rin, hindi pa anal in the, in the court of heaven. So, hindi mag-work yung marriage. So, maghihiwalay na naman hahanap naman ng ibang partner hanggang makailang partner hoping na ano magwo-work yung marriage nila but the truth is hindi yun magwo-work until there is an annulment of marriage in the courts of heaven so the simple thing you can do now is bring the couple into the courts of heaven and ask God to annul that marriage okay 
the purpose of the court. So the court of heaven is where justice is meted out. Dito, dito inilalabas ni Lord. Nirelease niya yung kanyang justice. Because the foundation of His throne is righteousness and justice. It is where God judges situations in personal lives, in the lives of a nation, and the city. So, kung meron na tayong uh, access doon sa korte na yun, napakagandang pagkakataon. Kaya, masasabi mo nothing is impossible to God. He is the judge of the earth. And He issues judgment based on the argument set forth in the courts of heaven. So the problem is, pag hindi ka sumipot sa korte, so sino yung pakikinggan niya? Yun lang naghain ng, ano, ng accusation. Paano mo magdepensa ng sarili mo? Okay? Kaya nga, yun yung sinasabi natin na marami tayong mga prayer na matagal na natin pinagpipray, hindi nangyayari, hindi sinasagot. Hindi dahil sa ayaw ng Diyos sagutin. It's because there is, the enemy has a legal right on your uh, claim. Di ba? On your prayers. May legal right pa siya na hindi ibigay sa'yo. The next is, in the court of heaven, justice is determined. Mercy is found and the wrath of God is poured out. So when the justice is determined, the wrath of God can come to the wickedness, to the wicked people, or to the wicked uh, no, spirit. Okay? It's either uh, Satan is able to destroy lives, or he is stopped based on what? The judgment. So if you are not in the court, so default judgment ang mangyayari sa atin. So the court of heaven is where breakthrough crumbs come for believers. So gusto mo makabreakthrough yung mga miyembro mo? Bring them into the court of heaven. At ang isa sa mga uh, dapat unang puntahan natin muna ay ang tinatawag na court of mercy. Kasi doon natin ididil yung mga accusation na ibinabato sa atin ng kaaway. The issue of justice that come forth are directly related to us as individuals. So remember, you go back to Luke chapter 18. Ba? He, he's, the story of the, the parable of, of a widow is asking for justice. Okay? And this lady didn't even confront his uh, accuser. He only go to the judge and ask for what? Judgment. At the start, the judge will not give her the justice na hinihingi niya. But because sa pangungulit itong babae, ang sabi nga ng parable is this, she might wear me out. Sabi niya, baka ako ipaguri nitong babae na ito kababalik. Most likely, yung babae, siguro doon na natutulog sa gate ng bahay niya. Asking for what? Justice. Doon sa injustice na kanyang naranasan. Anong promise ni Lord? Sabi niya, Will he not give justice to his elect who cry out day and night? Sabi niya, I will do it speedily. So, this kind of prayer, when you bring the issue to the courts of heaven, there is a promise, speedily. So, let's see the rules of court, the important rules of court. This is the story about Joshua who went to uh, heaven and is standing in the court before the angel of the Lord or before the Lord Jesus Christ. And the enemy is accusing him because he's wearing what? A filthy garments. In the Bible, the filthy garments represent what? Sin. And it is the Lord who rebuked the enemy. At nag-uto siya doon sa mga angel. Sabi niya, remove the filthy garments from him. Pagkatapos, sinutan pa siya ng ano? Turban. Let them put a clean turban, he said. Alam mo yung turban, panlagay sa ulo? That is, I believe, 
uh, a symbol of authority of, of a as a judge. Joshua was promoted and he was promoted to be one of the judges of the courts of God. Okay? At anong sabi ni Lord? Binigyan siya ng promise. If you will walk in my ways. Sabi niya, will just walk in my ways. Anong sabi niya? And keep my charge. You shall rule my house and have charge of my court. So si Lord ang nagbigay ng ano, ng promotion sa kanya. So he will have, sabi niya, I will give you the right of access. So he was given an access to the courts of heaven. And mga kapatid, this is for all of us. Okay? This is uh, a uh, an inheritance of all the saints. Number one, Access to the Father and His throne will only be granted through Jesus Christ. His only unique Son. It's not begotten. I'm sorry. It's unique Son. It's a Greek word, unique Son. Okay? It is only through Jesus Christ. Number two, rules. Jesus Christ is the only way. Truth and door through which one can enter the courts. So, kung hindi ka dadaan kay Jesus Christ at hindi mo siya i-recognize, you can never enter the courts of heaven. And then, of course, repent of sins and transgressions before, you, before your case is presented. Kaya nga sabi ni Lord si, sa 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, we have an advocate in heaven. And that advocate is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our defense lawyer that will defense us in every accusation that the enemy is throwing on us. Never argue with the accuser. Under any circumstances, always hold your peace. When you're in the court, tandaan nyo, you relinquish your authority. You have no authority in the court. Your authority here only on earth. Because the heavens belong to God and the earth was given to man. And man, when he enters the court, when he enters the court, he relinquishes authority. He submits to the authority of the court. Even the devil has no authority there. That's the reason why you are safe. There's a lot of bailiffs or sheriff in the courts of heaven. The angels to protect you. Kaya pag ang spiritual warfare mo, dinala mo sa korte, walang baklas. Sigurado meron kang ano, protection. Next, the word of God is the foundation for all court proceeding and verdicts. And nothing outside of the word will stand. Okay, importante yan. Ano pa? You can only appear with your jurisdictional right. A certain levels of authority are required to appear in certain courts. May mga courts na hindi para sa lahat. May mga courts para sa lahat. Okay? Meron din jurisdictional right. Okay? Hindi po pwede na, uh, halimbawa mo, may isang uh, issue sa isang probinsya. Hindi ka man taga roon, hindi ka pwede mag-represent sa court of heaven nung issue na yon ng probinsya na yon. Ang pwede lang doon ay yung mga ano, taga roon. Okay? Seven. The whole creation is governed in accordance with God's law. There is God's law. Everything. Kaya nga sabi niya, when He hangs the earth upon nothing, the earth is what? A manage or governed by what? The laws of God. Okay? So kahit pa anong personal position mo tungkol sa creator ng heaven and earth, it doesn't matter. Why? Because the whole creation is governed in accordance with God's law. So let's go to what we call jurisdictional system. Sabi ng Wikipedia, jurisdictional system is the practical authority granted to a legal body to administer justice as defined by the kind of case and location of the issue. So, like for example, court. 
may certain jurisdiction lang yan. Like for example, the court of tax, tax of uh, court of tax. So if you have some problem with taxes, go to that court of tax. If you have some problem with families, uh, marriage or child custody, you go to family court. Oh, kapag meron kang iaapila na kaso doon mula sa regional trial court, you can file motion for reconsideration. Kapag final na yan, pwede kang pumunta ngayon saan? Sa Supreme Court. Pwede kang mag-ask ng TRO or pwede kang magpa-review. And then kapag hindi ka pa rin satisfied, you can go to the Supreme Court for final and executory ng decision na gusto mong mangyari. Okay? So, Hebrews 12.22, sabi niya, But you have come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Ano pa nga dyan? The judge, the blood, Jesus Christ is also there. So, the heavenly Jerusalem is what? The Mount Zion. That is where the court is located. At ang sabi niya, you have come. You have come. Ibig sabihin, galing ka na roon. Okay? Why? Because we're seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. So if you're seated with Christ, hindi mo lang alam, hindi mo lang nai-realize, you've been, you've been there. Okay? You've been there in the court. Madalas, nagpipray tayo. Madalas, sa totoo lang, din mo ka dinadala ni Lord sa korte. Hindi mo lang alam na yung pag-pray mo, you are in front of the court of heaven. On earth, for justice to be done, a case need to be presented in front of the court. Same applies in the heavenly courts. Kaya may maraming mga korte sa langit. Why? That is a jurisdictional system. Okay? Sa Tagalog, yung jurisdiction nasa sakupan. Okay? So we have the right through Christ to present cases within the various court and use, utilizing the various authorities that God gave us to present cases in that court. And this also give the judge over all creation the right to render judgment to bring justice on earth. Mga kapatid, that's what happen when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Jesus gave the Father a legal right para niya ano, mapatawad at mamahal ang tao patuloy niyang mamahal legally. Kasi, di ba sabi niya, without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission of sin. That is the legal requirements for God masunod yung kanyang passion, yung pagmamahal niya sa tao. Hindi niya basta pwedeng mahalin ang tao na hindi niya, hindi niya sundin yung legal requirements. Kaya kinakailangan yung kanyang bugtong na anak ang mamatay, magkatawan tao at mamatay para sa atin. So what happens? Because of that, what happened in the cross of Calvary, ano nangyari? He can now render judgment to all the creation of God para mabalik ang creation sa dati kasi nga nasira ito ng dahil sa kasalanan. So that's what judgment is all about. That's the reason why He is seated at the throne and releasing judgment upon the earth. For what purpose? Para ma-restore back ang creation sa Kanya. God rules the earth from His seat or throne of government at Mount Zion also known as Heavenly Jerusalem. Okay? The enemy is in a constant warfare against anything involving God's government. That's why si Satan, he walked uh, sa 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 ba yun? Nasabi niya, he's like a roaring lion walking around looking for someone to devour. Why is walking around? Because he's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He's walking around uh, to and fro. Diba? Job, Job chapter 1. What is his purpose? 
He is looking for evidence to accuse us in the court day and night. Kaya nga masipag itong mama na ito. Okay? And the warfare na itinuturo sa atin ni Lord ay hindi sa battlefield. The warfare is in the courtroom of heaven. This is the reason why the enemy is relents, relents, relentlessly attempting to destroy Jerusalem and Israel. Why? Jerusalem is the gates of the nations. So the only way he can get all the nations to control all the nations is what? Through Jerusalem. So if he gets Jerusalem, he gets all the nations of the earth. In his view, the most effective way is to hinder God from governing the earth is to destroy his footstool. Israel is his footstool. Okay? Now, the ecclesia, or commonly known as church, is part of the jurisdictional system within the courts. The ecclesia, remember, each one of us is part. We are officers of the court. And the highest officer of the court that is on earth is the Holy Spirit. And each one of us, born again believers, who is a priest after the order of Melchizedek, is what? Part of this jurisdictional system. Because all of creation is bound by these jurisdictions. So as Ecclesia, we can only present cases which are within our jurisdictional right. Kaya naalala mo si, si Abraham when he intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. Why is it that Abraham is asking for number? Hindi siya nagdiretso na sabi niya, Lord, have mercy, wag mong gunawin yung, ano, yung Sodom and Gomorrah. Nagtanong pa siya, Lord, kung may 50, hindi mo magugunawin. Why is asking for number? Because il mo, uh, Abraham is not from Sodom and Gomorrah. If he's from Sodom and Gomorrah, he has a legal right. He has a jurisdiction to ask God for mercy. Okay? So, these jurisdictional rights are in accordance with the authorities that we have received from God. So, iba-ibang level ng authority, iba-ibang jurisdiction. Okay? As His children. So, but the most common na lahat tayo ay pwedeng lumapit ay doon sa ano? Hebrews 4.16, yun sa tinatawag nilang Mercy Court. Okay? So, what are the hindrances in the court of heaven? Number one is forgiveness. Why? If we want to be forgiven, we must ourselves forgive. Because if we choose to hold on our resentment or bitterness, we are blocking the ability of the Father to work in our behalf as a just judge because when you will when when you forgive what happens you are giving god a legal right to avenge for us to avenge for you siya ang maghihiganti para sa iyo kaya nung sinabi niya itong yung yan yung ibig niyang sabihin na if you don't forgive the father will not forgive you if you don't forgive from your heart your father will not forgive you ibig niyang sabihin he cannot defend you he cannot, uh, uh, he cannot uh, make decision, judgment on your behalf as a judge in your favor if you will not forgive. Okay? Kaya si Sekaraya, ang charge sa kanya, if you keep my ways, if you walk in my ways. Okay? Importante yon. Kaya forgiveness is a way of life. At ang forgiveness, mga kapatid, forgiveness not in the mind, not in the will. It must be coming from our heart. Because the heart is you. Your mind is yours. Your will is yours. But your heart is you. So, if you want na mag-forgive, then what will happen? 
Because forgiveness is costly, mga kapatid. Because pag nagpatawad ka, ikaw na nasaksta, nasaktan, ikaw ang magbabayad. Like what Jesus did. He knew no sin. Siya na walang kasalanan, pero siya nagbayad. So, in forgiving, from the heart, means you pay the debts. Ikaw mismo na ninakawan, ikaw ang magbabayad ng utang. Okay? And what is the, ano, what is the catch? You become like Jesus. That is the reward. If you forgive, you become more like Jesus. Holding unforgiveness is likened to drinking a poison while hoping the other person will die because we choose to drink the poison. Nakakatawa, ano? Inumin mo yung lason at inaasahan mo na pag inunom mo ito, mamamatay siya. Kailanman, hindi mangyayari yun. So, the second hindrance is judging others. Because we judge others when we are not in a position when we are not in a position to judge. We make ourselves out to be God. Yes, there are times the Lord will cause you to judge. Like the court of Ecclesia. The elders are called by God to judge. Kaya ang sabi niya, judge righteously. Oh, you judge this person who doesn't want to repent. So Paul went to heaven and asked God for the judgment of that person. Okay? So if you have no authority to do that, you are not in a position to judge, you become, you are making yourself God. So we are told to judge not. Why? Lest we will be judged. So when we judge someone, we are guilty of the same thing for which we judge another and we bring condemnation upon ourselves. The problem is we become what? Accuser. We become like Satan. Yan ang pinaka mahirap gawin. Kaya di ba sa body of Christ, sa loob ng simbahan din, ang daming accusation. Why? Because most of the people in the church, they be play like God. They want to judge people. They want to judge others. Papaano? If we try to convince any one of their sin, di ba? Sasabihin sa kanya, kasalanan niya, ganito ka niya. Ay, ayaw maniwala sa'yo. The result is, you're offended. And when you're offended and you become resentful, ano gagawin mo ngayon? You begin to judge them. Yan, kasi kasi hindi spiritual, kasi ganito, hindi kasi nagpipray, kasi ganito, ganyan-ganyan. Oh. In doing so, we become what? A lawful captive ourselves. Naging captive na tayo. Why? You release judgment. Nasabi ni Lord, huwag kang magano ng judge. Matthew 7, verses 1 and 2, in an amplified version, do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemn yourself. For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned. And in accordance with the measure you used to deal out to others, it will be dealt out again to you. Mga kapatid, there is only one judge. If we place ourselves in a position of the judge, we are in trouble. So do not get be fooled. Do not get fooled into being an accuser by judging others when we ourselves need a defender. That's the reason why when you go to the court, ano ang tawag sa iyo? Dependent. Okay? Why? You want you need a defender. Jesus Christ is your advocate. He is your defense lawyer. He is the one that will defend you in the courts of heaven that the enemy is accusing you of. Okay? Now, let's go to parliamentary court. This is the first court tonight na ating pag-aralan. 
Okay? Ano sabi ni Lord sa Isaiah 9, 6 to 7? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The seal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Remember, huh? it's the seal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This government and peace that there will be no end. Okay? It will not us that will make that. Okay? It is the seal of the Lord. Let's see the general information about this court. Okay? When you enter, you are required to stand in either a provincial, national, municipal, or barangay, governmental position. You need, ang pwede pumasok dito ay yung mga tao na may hawak ng governmental position. Okay? Pangalawa, the children of God also can come there if you are in what? The apostolic or prophetic authority. Pwede ko nang sabihin, the fivefold ministry. The elders of the city. Okay? They may also gain access to this court. Including the business, businesses, business people conducting business with governments will also receive authority to enter. Okay? And here you can see Jesus Christ seated on the throne at the right hand of the Father. Jesus operates from within his authority as ruler, shepherd, and counselor over all. Kasi sinabi niya, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Okay? According to those who went to, to this court, those representing the kingdom of light are seated at the right hand of the Father and this position indicates favor. And those who are presenting the, representing the kingdom of darkness are seated to the left of the Father and this position indicates judgment or I can say the negative judgment. These are the fallen sons of God who are trying to destroy this nation. Okay? That's why he's there in making what? Accusation against this nation. Now, what is government? A government is a system by which a state or community is controlled. Without the government, there will be what? No peace. Magulo. Okay? There will be what? Chaos. And that's why God provided what? A government. Okay? Second, a government refers to a person or group of people exercising authority over a political organized territory. When there is a political organized territory like barangay, isang barangay, merong council, may kapitan, these are what? Government. They are the people exercising what? Authority over that barangay. So, lakayan natin sa isang town, o, di ba? may mayor, and then sa isang probinsya, merong governor. And then when this, the whole nations, we have the president. Okay? God gave them what? Authority to rule over the nation. So government is the means by which state policy is enforced. Sila din yung gumagawa ng policy at sila rin yung nagi enforce As well as the mechanism for determining the policy of a country. That's why meron tayong constitution. Meron tayong revised penal code. Di ba? Marami tayong mga batas. Oh. Sila yung nag enforce Kaso lang, sa government, hiniwalay natin yung tatlo. Sa kingdom kasi, nasa isang tao lang yon Judiciary, legislative, and executive, or government. But in the democracy, hinati yung tatlong branches na yun. Okay? And another one is a form of government. What is that? It is a set of political system. So maraming political system. Merong socialism, communism, merong ano, democracy. Oh. That's the reason why yung mga NPA, why up to now they're fighting. Because they want this uh, nation will become a communist. Pero magulat ka. 
itong mga komunista na ito ayaw sa China. E samantalang communist country yung China. Hindi ko maintindihan. Galit din sila sa ano? Sa Amerika. Dalang Amerika daw ay no? Imperialista. You see? It's a form of government. Okay? It's a set of political system and institution that make up the organization of a specific government. Okay? So, yan po ang gobyerno. Okay? Kaya nga ang democracy natin ay ano, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Kaya pag election, they buy the people. Okay? B-U-Y, they buy. That's why in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, sabi ni Peter, submit yourself to every ordinance of men for the Lord's sake. Why? Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors or unto them that sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So, Peter, this is the time of Peter that there are persecutions. It's very strong persecutions sa kanila. At sinabi pa rin ni Peter na you submit yourself to this ordinance of men. Ordinance of men, ha? Huh? For the Lord's sake. Why? The purpose of this government is what? To punish evildoers. So God placed government to punish evildoers. And for the praise of them that do well. Okay? So all governments are subject to the rule of Christ. Whether they are unbeliever or not. And they are supposed to serve their respective people to the best of their abilities. Yun yung mandate sa kanila. Not through fears, but what? Excellence. Ang malungkot lang ngayon, dahil sa COVID-19, ang pinaparot ng mga nasa gobyerno natin ngayon is fears. They're paroting what the World Health Organization is saying. Okay? They're paroting it. Okay? So, nakakalungkot. Narinig ko pa nga eh, one time, yung Department of Health, dinidiscredit yung isa sa mga uh, healing remedy, natural home remedy na ginagawa ng ating mga ninuno. Yung sa, sa Bisaya, ang tawag ay tuob. Yung kukuha ka ng mainit na tubig, lalagyan mo ng asin, at sisingutin mo kapag sinisipon ka. Even the Department of Health, they're, they're putting all their time and effort discrediting these things. You see? Oh. They're supposed to be doing and researching and putting their money maghanap ng cure. Hindi lang magbilang kung ilan ang namamatay at merong sakit. Okay? So, ang sabi ni, ni Peter, you submit to this government, this ordinance of men. Pero the question now is, eh paano kung itong, mga, oh, itong ordinance of men na ito is uh, directly opposite dun sa gusto mangyari ng Diyos. Yan ang ating pupuntahan. Merong remedy dyan. Kasi nga, all government are subject to the rule of Christ. So what you do? You go now to the court, the parliamentary court of heaven, and you make a submission. Okay? You don't fight the government. Okay? You submit. And then, if they, if they did wrong, I'll go to the, to the court of heaven. I'll file a petition. Okay? That is the remedy. Earthly governments reflect the parliamentary courts. Okay? Those who stand in position of authority in the government will have seat in the heavenly parliament. That's the reason why ito mga government official na ito, sa totoo lang, they are there. They can stand in that court, okay? And will either represent the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. Ayan. And some of them are what? They are what? Uh, sons of disobedience. Sometimes those are what? They are human agents of the fallen sons. Na ang purpose niya ay ano? To uh, propagate yung agenda ng mga pollen sun. 
So the enemy often gains territory within a city or country purely because the children of God are not seated within the heavenly parliament and are subsequently usurped by the evildoers. Hmm. Naaagaw sa atin yung ating authority. Why? We are not sitting in the heavenly parliament and placing our opposition to what they are doing. Okay? So the Lord is calling the ecclesia now. This is the warfare ng gusto ni Lord na gawin natin. You go to the court and take advantage of the judicial system of our just judge in heaven. Apostle and elders are called to proclaim decrees over governments, cities, provinces, nation, municipality, up to the barangay level. We are called to proclaim decrees. What are the decrees that we receive from heaven? We bring down here on earth and we declare it. Those within the body of Christ who stand in the authority on the governance mountain. Marami tayong nasa gobyerno. Senador, congressman, governor, mayor, marami na. Whether a prophet, apostle, governor, or business person are called to stand for righteousness to resist evil. Where do you resist evil? Not here. There in the heavenly court. And to establish God's government, government on earth. So after you get a ruling in heaven, you bring down here on earth. Yon, pang sampal mo sa mga, sa mga uh, principalities and rulers of government or rulers that is governing this nation. The apostles of the Lord are to uproot and destroy evil structures. So, ang trabaho ng mga apostle ay hindi lang title yan. It really, the Lord called you to be an apostle. To be an apostles? Hmm. Your work is to uproot and destroy evil structures. That is the work of the apostle. You go to the court of heaven. Prophets should be God's voice to governments and rulers. So, bakit hindi tayo pinakinggan ng gobyerno? It's because we are not proclaiming the voice of God. And where do we get the voice of God? Jeremiah 23.18 In the counsel of the Lord. We are not just prophesying for the sake of prophecy. Our prophecy must come from where? The, 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 the divine council and the courts of heaven. And if we release that prophecy, God's judgment will come over governments. When I say judgment, decision, decree, verdict. Oh, kung may mga corruption, mga negative, mga evil thing, judgment will come. Gano din, yung positive, it will be in favor of us. The, judge, the God's judgment will be in favor to His people. So, tinan yung Acts 16.4, and they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep. So, this is the work of the apostle. King, princes, and rulers of the world are appointed by the Lord to establish stability in the land. We are called to establish stability in the land through justice and to rule righteously over their people. Yan yung, call, yan yung gawain ng mga rulers. That's the reason why walang authority na hindi si Lord na nag -ordain. Okay? So a throne or seat in governance is obtained through righteousness. And therefore, it is abomination in the eyes of the Lord for rulers to commit acts of wickedness. Pero kung yung throne or seat of governance nakuha mo through daya, dahil election, pwede mong bayaran yung mga tao, bilhin yung boto nila, why they are doing this? Because not because of righteousness. They want to propagate the work of the kingdom of darkness. That's why king by judgment established the land, but he that received gifts overthrow it. 
You see? Those who matanggap ng mga lagay. Okay? O kaloob, mga gifts. Okay? Bawal yun, ha? So, those in position of authority and who misuse their positions for evil doing, evil doing will surely be held accountable. And it is the ecclesia should make them, ano, should bring the court, the cases into the courts of heaven. Siya ngayon na mag, magdala noon. Okay? Para si Lord, i-account sila ni Lord. So, kung walang mag, mag, uh, mag present ng petition, kaya di ba sabi sa 2 Timothy chapter 2, prayer, supplication, petition be offered for all men, for kings. Why kings? Kasi yung petition is what? It's a, it's a legal term. Even intercession means a formal request to the court. Oh. So, this is the work of the ecclesia. But because we are ignorant of the judicial system of God, what happens? Wala tayo, hindi natin ginagawa. Okay? Sabi niya, the righteous will prevail against the dark forces while the unrighteous will be cut off. Yan ang mangyayari. So if we stand on that court, on that parliament, parliament court in heaven, parliamentary court in heaven, the unrighteous will be cut off. So you can read it in Micah chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. I'll just skip this one. Okay? So the last part, sabi niya, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment. So God will be the one. We are giving God legal right to give, to release judgment upon the land. So yung mga corrupt at yung mga naanjan dahil lamang sa gusto nila mag -corrupt. God will release the judgment. Kaya expect this. Kaya pagdating ng eleksyon, makikita mo, pag ginawa ito ng eklesia, maraming mga ordinary person na maiilek in governance na may kakayahan na mapamunuan ang, ang government. Righteously. So what is the relevance? Those representing God's kingdom should use their authority within this court. So the apostle, the elders of the city, the prophets should use their authority within this court to obtain righteous judgment and uproot the evil system and structure within that government. This court should also utilize to establish godly government within a nation, a province, municipality, or even barangay. Look at our uh, preamble. Sabi niya, we, the sovereign Filipino people, imploring the aid of the Almighty God. You cannot remove God in, even in the nation. Inilagay nga pati sa constitution. Mm. At pagkatapos, gusto mong alisin ang Diyos. Sa scenario. These are, the one that's doing this are what? The human agents of the fallen son. Okay, so anong gagawin natin? We will now go to the court and file petitions. So business people involved in dealings with government should make use of this court to bind righteous contracts and to receive authority to obtain territory. Oh, tinan mo, who has the, the big contracts? Yung malalaki mga kontrata sa gobyerno. Sino ang nakakakuha? Hindi kristyano. Okay? And most of these contracts are, you know, they take advantage of the Filipino people. Oh, look at panahon ni Ramos. We had a, what we call that? A uh, electric uh crisis sa electricity. So, ano nangyari? The Congress gave Ramos an authority to make negotiated contracts. Up to now, we are paying for it. Why? Because the government of Ramos entered with this scrupulous uh, corporations and 
uh, made contracts that is what on uh ano yan? uh one sided contracts sa kanilang pabor alam niyo ba yon na pati yung pinoproduce nilang kuryente na hindi natin nagamit binabayaran natin hanggang ngayon that's why ang kuryente sa Pilipinas ang pinakamahal sa Asia bakit hmm. they make propaganda of the ano nuclear power plant pinalabas nila na yung nuclear power plant ay ano dangerous hindi pwedeng gamitin But in fact, isi-switch na lang dapat siya eh. Oh. Inutang natin yan, how many billion yan? Oh. Ni isang kilowatt, hindi nakaproduce. Hmm. Who controls? You see? Oh, tubig, pinakamahal sa Asia. Oh. Who controls these uh, water concessioners? When righteous business people became aware of the corrupt conduct within government, they should oppose this behavior in the parliamentary court. By what? By proclaiming justice and truth through the word of God. Businessmen like we then should go to the courts and make some ano, petitions against this ano, corrupt conduct within the government. Hmm. God's righteous should also oppose unrighteous decision made by governments regarding educational, media, economic, and other sphere of influence. Question, what is our stand on the franchise of Channel 2, ABS-CBN? Oh, are they by, did they violate con, the, the franchise? Eh kung binayulate nila noon, ano ang gagawin natin? We should go to the courts. And file a motion na hindi napayagan sila na magkaroon ng, kontra- ng, ng prangkisa. Now, if they did not violate anything, hindi sila dapat pahirapan ng kongreso. Di ba? But if they violated the, con- the, the constitution, if they violated the, the franchise, they should not be given ano, a, a franchise. You get the point? Oh. Sino ang gagawa niyan? The Ecclesia. Mm. You know, media is part of, of government pillar. At yan, gusto ni Lord gamitin yan na i-communicate ang kanyang word. Eh hindi yung kingdom ni Lord ang na-establish eh. Kundi kingdom of darkness eh. Paano tingnan mo ang mga pinapalabas nila? So doon mo makikita na they are not, their agenda is not about propagating the, the agenda of God. So, if they are not propagating the agenda of God, ano ang gagawin natin? We have to oppose it. Hmm. So, how to establish God's government? Not everything we deal in the court of heaven is pleasant. Ito po ang isa sa mga mabibigat. Kasi we are facing here criminals. I'm When I say criminals, these are not the people who are doing petty crimes. Nang hold up, nag No, hindi yon. These are the people who corrupt, who plunder the wealth of this nation. Oh, mga kapatid, mga nakabarong yan. Mga gaganda yung tsura niyan. Yung mga drug lord, nakahammer yan. Oh. At sa totoo lang yung mga drug lord, mahirap pulihin yan. Bakit? Hindi naman humahawak ng droga yan. Eh, ang batas natin, Oh. Limited 'yon doon sa mga nagbebenta at nahuli. Oh. Kaya ang mahuhuli lang diyan ay yung mga mga peddlers, yung mga nagbebenta. Pero yung mga drug lord, hindi mo mahuli 'yan. Oh. Protected 'yan ng mga tao ng ibang tao na sa gobyerno. Protected 'yan ng ibang mga pulis. Protected 'yan ng mga ibang mayor, governor. Oh. So, what the church would do? Go to the parliamentary court. 
Sometimes we need to deal with the extreme evil by accessing the parliamentary court. Alam niyo po, yung corruption sa Pilipinas, sabi na nga ay systemic na. Bakit systemic na? Parte na ng, ng ano yan, ng uh, buhay ng tao. Pag sila ay na, nahalal o napunta dyan, na-appoint, ang unang gagawin nila, papaano kumita ng pera sa maling paraan. And they have to make it sure, at least 2 billion pesos pataas ang kanilang nanakawin. Bakit? Kasi pag nahuli sila, may pambayad sila sa mga husgad, sa judges. Pwede nilang bayaran. Pwede sila mag-hire ng mga magagaling na abogado para sila mapawalan sa ala. Nakuha niyo. The criminals are not in the street. The real criminals are the ones that are in the Congress, in the Senate, or nasa posisyon ng gobyerno. Hmm. A common petition within this court is request for a restraining order against a person or entities that seek to harm an individual or group. If this group or individual trying to harm this nation, we have to go to the court or to the parliamentary court to what? To ask for restraining order. Example, NPA and other arms group in the Philippines. Ang tagal na nito. Hindi pa rin natapos. Mamatay yung commander. May rise up naman na commander. Oh. Anong ginagawa nila? Kinikikila nila mga tao at sinasabi nilang revolutionary tax. Pero ano, mga tulisan na ang mga ito. Pag yung kawawang pub, kawawang contractor hindi nagbigay, susunugin niya kanya equipment. Kadalasan walang insurance yung mga equipments. Oh, ano mangyayari? Lugi. Hmm. Pag may kontrata ka sa gobyerno, required ka magbigay ng ano? SOP. Standard Operating Procedure daw. Magbibigay ka ng 10%, 20%. Pag yung mga mayor o governor humingi ng pondo si isang senador, oh, meron ding kaltas yung mga yun. Oh. So, who are the criminal here? It's not the, the people who are doing the Oh, criminal din yun. Kaso lang maliliit yun eh. O oh, question. What is the stand of the church when it comes to Senator Laila Dilima? Is he guilty of that crime or drugs? Or not? Eh kung hindi, dapat palayasin siya. We can petition the court. At pero kung guilty siya, we can ask for permanent injunction. Naku niyo ibig sabihin? Oh. Nangyari, may isang senador nakasuha ng plunder dahil kay Napolis, kay Napolis, pinadaan yung kanyang uh, pork barrel kay Napolis. Si Napolis naman, hindi fake na foundation. Oh, according nga dun sa witness, eh, ginagawa daw nila, kumukuha sila ng mga tao sa telephone directory, mga beneficiary kunyari nung kanilang foundation. Pero sila sila ang naghahati ng pera. Ah, nakasuhan itong senador na ito. Ang malungkot, dahil doon sa digal ba yung tatlo ang judge. Dalawa ang nag-favor na pawalang bisa, pawalang sala yung senador. Bakit? I don't know. But the thing is, have we asked the council what is the real score? Kasi ang nahatulan lang yung kanyang chip of staff na abogado. And in fact, nag-issue pa ng order ang korte na binabawi yung pera na nakapasok sa account niya. Isipin niyo yan. Kahit hindi naman ako abogado o judge, isipin ko lang. Di ba? Isip kahit grade 1. Parang yung yung jar, cookie jar, nahuli mo yung bata na ano, nagkukuha ng ano, ng cookie dun sa jar tapos hindi niya may matanggal yung kamay niya at sasabihin niya hindi ho ako naglanakaw eh yung kamay niya na andun sa loob ng cookie jar sasabihin mo hindi ka naglanakaw I'm not judging this person but I'm only citing the reality our work is what? we go to the court 
and present this thing. Because these people, is, they are part of the government. And government is, ano yan? Si Lord na nag-rule sa government. Kasama tayo doon. At pag wala tayong ginawa, we lost by default. How can the righteousness of God be established over this nation? Oh, COVID-19 lang. You look at the injustice. May mag-ama, gutom na, mamamatay na yun sa gutom. Nagtrabaho, ay wala naman masakyan. Nagmotor, nagsakay sila, backride. Hinuli, nakakulong. Yes, ando na ako, batas yun eh. Eh bakit yung ibang ano, mayor at senador na nag na nag uh, nag violate ng quarantine law. Hanggang ngayon, wala man hindi man sila nakulong. Oh. You see the ano, the unfair treatment or implementation of the law. Oh. So what do we do? We go to the court. You may request a permanent restraining order or injunction permanently. Or a temporary restraining order depending upon the situation in order to obtain the relief desired. So we go to the court. Diba? Last time, nag-submission tayo about the anti-terrorism bill. Because when we seek the Lord, ang nakita ng karamihan is this anti-terrorism bill is not designed to combat the terrorism here on earth on, on the Philippines but all, but this is designed to combat those who will oppose the government okay so some people have given themselves entirely over to satan wala kang magagawa they already made covenants with the devil why they habol nila ng kayamanan so they come to the point they become what they offer their lives to satan para lang magkaroon ng kayamanan at kapangyarihan. In the Old Testament, these people were sometimes referred to as what? Sons of Belial. They are sons of Belial. And we have so many people in the government that are sons of Belial. So, ano gagawin natin? Their only aim was to promote wickedness in the earth and to work against those who have behaved righteously. Whether or not they are beyond redemption, we will leave that up to the just judge. So, ang mahalaga, we can also indict, they can be indicted for criminal behavior and restrained from further actions. There are, so, there are companies designed to want to make people poor para pahirapan ang mga tao. Alam niyo ba na 98% of the wealth of the Philippines ay pinaghahatian ng 2% na pamilya sa Pilipinas? Karamihan dito mga inchik. Oh. And the 2% wealth na naiwan, pinag-aawayan, pinaghahatian ng 98% na pamilya sa Pilipinas. There is no equal distribution of wealth. That's the reason why the promise of God. For the Philippines is what? There will be what? A wealth, wealth distribution na mangyayari sa Pilipinas. Because God wants to bless this nation. And for that to happen, the elders must arise, the apostles, the prophet, the fivefold ministry must arise. Let's come together and let's just appeal to the courts, to the parliamentary court. The entire cultures have been affected by the sons of Bilyal. Remember the death of Naboth? Ahab saw the vineyard of Naboth. Nagka-interest siya. Sabi niya, bilhin ko na yan. Eh sabi ni Naboth, ayoko po kasi pamana lang ito sa akin. Pag binili mo, wala na ako ipamamana sa mga anak ko. Nalungkot siya, hindi nakakain ng ilang araw. Napansin ni Jezebel. Ikunento niya, kung bakit sa malungkot. Ang sagot ni Jezebel, ah, ba, ikaw ang hari ng Israel. Ibig sabihin na, you have the right for that land. So, anong ginawa ni Jezebel? Sabi niya, ako bahala, kumain ka na. 
he paid two people to make a uh, witness against Nabot. That Nabot blasphemed God and the king. What happened? He was put to death. Oh. And because of that, Elijah, the prophet Elijah came and released the judgment of God. Death over Ahab. Hmm. Ano yung tatlong particular na kasalanan na ito? Na merong katapat na judgment. Alam niyo ano? Ulit-ulit ito sa Bible, sa Old Testament. Number one is, in blood uh, shedding of the innocent blood. It attracts the judgment of God. Second, land grabbing. If you grab the land of other people. Oh, sa totoo lang, matindi ang land grabbing dito sa Pilipinas. Lalo dyan sa Jensen. Oh. Pangatlo, yung wages na hindi properly na ibinibigay ng mga employer. It attracts judgment. Okay? So, these sons of Belial's, it affects our culture. They work to destroy anything relating to God in a culture. Much of what we see at work in the earth today is the result of the unhindered efforts of the sons of Bilyal. What's happening in the Philippines is unhindered effort yan na mga sons of Bilyal. And that is unhindered by the Ecclesia. So if the Ecclesia is active, I guarantee you, they will be hindered. Hindi makakagalaw. Why? Because we have the backup of the court of heaven. We have the backup of the angelic forces in heaven. So the church have not availing the courts of heaven in dealing with those who rule ruthlessly work evil on the earth. In the past, ang turo kasi sa antin, labanan mo, demonyo, sigawan mo. If you're here on earth fighting the spirit realm, you cannot. You will not. You will lose. There's always retaliation against you. But when you go to the courts of heaven and make submission into the courts of heaven, you are protected. Ours has been a kesera sera mindset. Whatever will be, will be. Kaya tingnan nyo po. Ang daming congressman ngayon, they are fighting against the renewal of the ABS-CBN. But all of those things, mababaliwala pag ang eklesiya hindi nag-submission sa langit. Ipalagay na natin na totoo na maraming violation. So if there are violations, they are not supposedly to be given a new, a new franchise. Pero, pag di tayo nag-submit, talo tayo sa korte, masusunod pa rin yung gusto ng kaaway. Oh. Kaya ang point dito is, we have to stand for what is right. What I mean is, if Channel 2 is not breaking any law, they should be given a franchise. Huwag nang patagalin. But, if they violated the constitution, they violated the, the franchise law that they have, sorry na lang, dapat hindi sila bigyan. Yun ang point ko. Pero yun ay mangyayari lamang yan pag ang iklesia, they avail the courts of heaven. So if we as the church do not govern properly by the power and direction of the Holy Spirit, evil will triumph. Edward Burke said, for evil to triumph, the good man has to do nothing. Yun lang. Oh. For evil to triumph in the Philippines, the ecclesia will just do nothing. Kesera sera. Ang dami pa yan. Ang dami mga batas dyan sa Congress na nakakalusot. Those are evil laws. Wala lang tayong nagbum... Ewan ko kung may nagbumonitor ng mga batas dyan. Karami mga batas sinasalan dyan sa mga private corporation na nai-exempt sa tax. 
the Congress gave some exemption. Ang tagal-tagal ng kumpanya, exempted pa rin sila sa, sa tax. Sinong ninanakawa nila? Yung malilit na kumpanya at yung mga, mal, yung mga, mga tao. You get the point? So, that's my prayer. Kung nanalo lang sana si Attorney Lindo, nakapasok siya. So at least meron tayong nagbabantay doon na mga ano, kung ano mga batas na dapat i-abort na hindi mangyari. And that is the work of the Ecclesia. Make submission into the courts of heaven. So as we have been so busy doing nothing, the powers and workers of darkness have conquered many of the mountains of culture. They conquered the family. Oh. Diba? They conquered the religion. Ang daming mga false religion. They conquered the government. Oh, mga korap ang nahalal. They conquered the media. Propaganda lang ang ginagawa nila. Oh, fake news. Ano ba? They conquered the sports. They have become the dominant voice. Sabi ni Lance Wall, no? You don't need majority to conquer that mountain. You only need at least one third. You can now conquer that mountain. We as the church have the charge to finish the work of Jesus that God gave us. And what is the work to disciple nations? Tandaan yung mga patid, ang discipleship, it's not about discipling a person. Yes, I agree, it's part of it. But the concept, read Matthew 28, it's talking about what? Nation, buong bansa, ang iyong i-disciple that the gov including the government would agree with the government of God. Okay? Kaya hindi pwedeng wala tayong participation. Hindi pwedeng ihiwalay mo ang reliyon sa government. Hindi pwede yun. Because that is our mandate. What? To disciple the whole nations. As the Ecclesia arises and begins to legislate, we will be able to successfully curtail their activities and impact of them in the earth. So, we can stop them. Like, for example, yung mga corrupt na mga public official. Makikita natin, mga nasa posisyon, marami nang makukulong yan. Okay? Why? God will start to move. I-expose ni Lord yung mga magnanakaw sa gobyerno. Oh. Yung mga corrupt sa business, i-expose din nila. Makukulong yung mga yon. Why? Judgment in heaven, in the parliamentary court, has been released. And paano marirelease yan? Kinakailangan merong magpetition muna. Kasi ang korte, walang desisyon na gagawin pag walang nagpetition. So we'll be doing more than simply obtaining restraining orders. Up to the point, I guarantee you mga kapatid, that's the promise of the word of God. The Lord will be issuing arrest warrant. And use other means within the courts of heaven. Magugulat ka. Marami dyan mga kaso na mga matagal nang na natutulog na kaso ng case of corruption sa Sandigan Bayan, sa Ombudsman. Ang biglang ano? Madidesisyonan. Why? Because the courts, the parliamentary courts of heaven, release judgment Kasi maraming mga government officials sa mga munisipyo at probinsya kahit alam na nilang korap yung tao binoboto pa rin why because there is a spirit behind hmm. So to to deal with it you go to the courts of heaven Now let's move on to the next court we call it the courts of times and season. 
Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 For everything there is a season and time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up. What is planted? A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stone, and a time to gather stone together. So in other words, uh, He makes all things beautiful in His time. So, anyone within, this is the general information about this court. Anyone within their jurisdictional right can go to this court. So, I believe everyone, everyone, every born-again believer can go to this court. And times and seasons of individuals, family, business, tribes, communities, country, nations, and the entire world are mediated through this court. So, we have a book kasi. Sa book natin nakasulat doon yung ano, mga pinagagawa sa atin ng Panginoon. And God has specific time and season for us to fulfill this uh, mandate na pinagagawa sa atin. And for whatever reason, nami-miss natin yung mga events na yun o yung mga dapat mangyari. So, para maayos ito, you can go to the court of times and season. All four seasons, winter, summer, autumn, and spring, are present in this court, as well are the four winds, north, south, west, and, and west wind. Okay? Court proceeding are conducted outdoors. Ito yung karamihan mga nakikita ng mga seer. When you go to this court, wala sa isang parang building yung ano, yung setting. The setting is what? In a col colorful environment. With everyone present wearing festive garments. And included doon yung various feasts ordained by God. The seven feasts of the Lord is uh, uh, it plays part in the courts of time and season and always present yung mga feast na sinasabi ni, ni Lord. And then, question, have you ever tried mango when they are out of season? Of course. Maasim yan. This is what happens some of your prayers when not prayed through the gates of time. Walang an answer. Did you know that there are four watches in the day? And for watches in the night, oh, my season, my time. Did you know that Jesus Christ, the apostles and the prophets, often made strategic intercession at specific watches? Do you often read the word at the hour of prayer? There is what? Hour of prayer. There is time. Okay? Do you know that the product productivity of your prayers is determined by how effectively you pray? through these gates of time. Time is the first and the most important resource God has given to every human. Being alive on this earth to accomplish His purpose. You need time. Okay? As long as you have time, example, even your lifetime, you can accomplish anything. Look at uh, Senator Enrile. 90 plus na. And he accomplished a lot. Okay? Why? The Lord has blessed him with time. If you want to spread the gospel, you need time. If you want to create wealth, all you need is time. If you want to learn a new language, all you need is what? Time. If you want to gain or lose weight, all you need is time. Once you can possess the gates of time, you are in a better position to possess the other gates in your life. Okay? So, an era is made up of cycles, which are made up of seasons, which are made up of times and paces. So, in order to move from one pace to another, or from one season or era to another, you will need to pass through time of gates. Okay? Example, 24 hours a day. It contains what? Different paces and different oh no, watches. 
Luke 12, 38, And if he shall come into second watch, or come in the third watch, okay, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Everything is controlled and measured by time. Whoever controls time, controls everything. Unfortunately, these times, time gates, are often controlled by the enemy. Why? Because of the accusation of the sin that we have committed. And the accusation na hindi pa natin nasasagot doon sa korte sa langit. So why God designed a specific time and season for each individual? Kasi daw, He wants to masterfully equip us and be surrounded us by His all-compassing love so that we may take up our individual callings to ultimately achieve His will and purpose for us. Tinan nyo, He changed the times and season. He removed kings and set up kings. So there is a time involved in removing kings and setting up kings. There's always perfect time. Okay? Times and season, the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, future, regarded as a whole and a point of time as measured in hours and minutes, past midnight or noon. That is the definition of times and season. Now, what is the importance of this? Kaya sabi ng Galatians 6.9, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So there is a time element that is involved. So, Psalm 31 verse 15, My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. Nothing ever happens out of coincidence as everything happens for a reason. Why? God has a specific time. What is next that will happen to your life? Okay? God allowed certain events in our life. Why? Because of the legal right obtained by the enemy through one's unrepented sin. This is the reason kaya nadidiskaril yung oras ni Lord sa buhay natin. Na out of sync tayo sa, sa timing ni Lord is because the enemy was obtained legal right. Like for example, si Job. Job was blessed, tama? He's doing fine. Meron siyang negosyo. Maraming siyang mga, tawag dyan, mga cattle. Everything. Mayaman siya. Then suddenly, the enemy was able to get a legal right over Job. And suddenly, bilang nabago ang buhay niya. Na mawala yung kanyang mga, mga negosyo. Namatay yung kanyang mga anak. Nagiba yung bahay. Hinamaan ng tornado. Namatay yung mga anak niya. Natira na lang yung asawa niya. Oh, you see, there was what? The certain events that happens. Okay? Oh, hanggang dumati yung time na yung asawa niya, siya pa yung ano, nagsabi sa kanya na you curse God. Mamatay ka na, and then you curse God. So, it's simple. If we move, God moves. So, we need to remember that failing to move in God's timing can bring what? Unwanted consequences. So why we need some adjustment in our time? Why out of sync? One of the reasons is disobedience. Second is the trauma. And this trauma causes us to stuck in time. Oh. Pag nakaranas ka ng mga trauma, may mga trauma o yung mga unfortunate events in your life, and it created trauma, you were stuck in time. Hindi ka makano, makamove at hindi ka makagawa ng tamang decision. Times and season can be shifted by correct petition in this court. Example, God told Abraham that his people will be in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. But according to the scripture, scriptures, Exodus, umalis lang sila sa Egypt after 430 years. So, ano nangyari? Hindi kasalanan ng Diyos yun. There were a delay of 30 years. So, nung sila'y nasa wilderness pa, 
There was another delay of 40 years. Why? Because of the disobedience of the people. The 10 leaders of the tribe believed the false, the, the, the bad reports. Nani yung reports na sabi nila, oh, yeah, ma ma marami nga land flowing with, with milk and honey. Pero ano, yung land is what? There's so many giants. Oh, di ba? And because of that, yung 40 days na pag-stay nila doon sa promise land, sabi nila, ang parusa ko sa inyo, you will be in the wilderness, roaming around for 40 years. And God make an appeal, sabi niya, o oh, Moses, ganito na lang, patay na lang natin yan. Patayin ko na lang yung mga tao na yan sa para makapasok ng isa promise land. Moses interceded. He didn't agree with God and God honored it. So how? What happened? It took many years. So hinaya muna ni Lord na mamatay yung mga tao na yon except for Caleb and Joshua. Okay? You may be in an extended period and seem stuck and unable to get out of it. Go to the court of times and season and petition for a correction of time and season in your situation. Yung iba, single pa hanggang ngayon. The reason why, there might be along the way, you've been stuck. So you go to the court and ask God to reveal to you kung ano yung dahilan. And then you can ask the court to remove you from that being stuck in the time and ask God this court to what? Uh, reset the time for you. With this court, lost tears can be erased. Lost tears can be erased. And we can get our lives in synchronization with God's timing for us. That's the good news. Talagang mahal tayo ng Diyos. At other times, we have gotten ahead of the timing and the need of our clock turn back to get in, in sync with God's timetable for our lives. Minsan, nag-uuna tayo. Certain things in our lives have a specific point in times in which they are supposed to happen. So when interferences to that set time come into your lives, it can create a cascading effect of, or, of missed opportunities misrelationship and misblessing. So, pag may mga dumating mga interferences due to disobedience, okay? Example, you misapply. Wow. Ngayon, iba na. Noon, pwede mo pang i-rebook. But today, sa mga low-cost airline, you cannot rebook the flight. If you miss the flight, goodbye. Goodbye yung pera mo. Goodbye yung ticket. So one of the strategies of the enemy is to push us to do things before we or others are ready. So ano nangyayari? We go ahead of the timing of God. So to be ahead of time again can result in a negative what? Repercussions. So you may say, uh, but God, but can God just shift things around and make it happen? Yes, possibly, pwede. But the question is, dapat siya bang gawin? Kasi sometimes we want him to bail us out and excuse our disobedience or lack of sensitivity to what he is doing. Parang earthly father. Our earthly father does not always bail their children out of a situation. Does not bail us out. Why? We need to learn the lesson of full obedience. Kaya yan ginagawa ng ating mga tatay. How much more yung tatay natin sa langit? So he allow us to go through this misfortune, yung mga wrong timing na yan, na mamimiss mo yung iba because of our disobedience. For us to learn the lesson of full obedience. We have to remember that the realm of the spirit is what? Outside of time. That's why God can rearrange it. Time is for our benefit. Why? So we can rest our bodies and soul. It gives order to our lives and help us keep our lives in order. That's the purpose of time. So, God regulates 
and has planned everything in accordance with his ordained times and season. There is what? Time and season. Kaya nga, naalala ko noon, si, si Duterte, nung nanalo siya ang presidente, umiiyak siya dun sa puntod ng kanyang nanay. So, hindi niya kalain na siya mananalo. And he realizes that it was what? God-given uh, calling. It is the Lord who appointed him to run this nation at this time. Okay? For if we do not understand the times as well as what God is doing, we would not do. We would not know what to do. Kaya mahalaga na alam mo kung ano yung ginagawa ng Diyos. Why? That is our divine restraining order. Like what Jesus did, I only do what I see my Father is doing. That was His restra divine restraining order. Same true with us, we are sons of God. The same din ang restraining order na binigay sa atin. Because as Jesus walked, we will walk the same here on earth. So if we don't understand the times and season, we will not know what God is doing. And then if we will not know what God is doing, we will miss our what? Divine restraining order. So being in uncertainty gave the enemy leverage that we simply cannot afford. It seems like binibigyan mo siya ng maraming ammunition para yung ammunition na yun, yung bala na yun, gamitin sa'yo. So we don't want that. That's why he made all things beautiful in his time. So it is not always easy to transition from one season to another, even in the best of circumstances. Especially, kung ikaw ay galing sa magandang season, ang hirap mag-translate, mag-move to the next season. Kasi, comfort zone mo na yun eh. The key to transitioning well is to first discern the change in season. If there is a change of season, we can what? Take advantage of that. So the process is, we go to the court. You can pray, Lord, I'm here in regard to a readjustment of time for this person or for my life. I ask that the timing of my life or their life be synchronized with the timing of the Lord. So a simple prayer lang. But you have to put it in your mind. You are going to the court. You are presenting, presenting this in the court of heaven, in the court of times and season. Oh, pwede mo nang sabihin, Lord, I miss my light in this area. Wala pa akong asawa. And alam ko naman, sinabi mo that you will give me a, a husband or a wife. But hanggang ngayon, wala pa. So, there might be something along the way na, na out of sync ka. So, anong gagawin mo? You go to the court. And you said, Lord, I want the time na ma-reset. Yung mga wasted years, Lord, burain mo. Palitan mo. Remember, in the spirit realm, there's no time. Eternity yun eh. Diba? Ang explanation daw nila ng eternity is what? Past, present, future in one place. So, uh, you, you observe. You watch and listen. You will see the Lord will have His angels begin working and adjusting a clock relating to you. Tingnan nyo, parang ganito yan eh. Alam nyo yung tawag dyan? Granddad clock. Ayan. Kung yan na yung time mo, i-reset -re yan. Aayusin ni Lord dyan. Remember, God is so powerful. It's beyond time. Okay, mga kapatid. If there are wasted years in your life, there is still a remedy. If you miss 
things in your life, in your ministry, you can still go to the courts of heaven. You can go to the uh, court of times and season and ask the Lord, the Lord, can you reset my time? Allow my time to be sync with your time. And every lost opportunities, Lord, can you return it back to me kung pwede? Okay? So you can petition the court. So everything na pwede, i-return sa ni Lord John. Pero yung hindi na pwede, hindi na i-return ni Lord John. Okay? Pero ang mahalaga, you went to the court and pleaded and asked for God's mercy. Amen? Okay. God bless you po. And um, yung pong mga uh, nag-enroll sa School of Seer, we will be starting on July 6, on Monday at 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And the next class will be on Thursday. So that will be two meetings in one week. At ang duration lang po niya ng school ay four weeks lang. So, bali, eight meetings lang. So, we encourage you to enroll now. So, you can uh, click the link na pinadala ko sa messenger and then mag-register kayo. Para, kasi po ito, we will uh, we will have some uh, every lesson we will send you some questionnaires and you're going to answer that questionnaire. And then, uh, email it back to us. And then, so that we can find, we can monitor kung, uh, ano bang tawag doon? Kung ano yung uh, improvement ng inyong, tawag dyan, ng inyong uh, learning. Okay? We will also have some practical applications. We will also have some testimonies from seers that have been operating in the courts of heaven. Kasi ang purpose po natin dito, that God would activate the seers for the purpose na sila ay magamit doon saan? Sa submission, petition, sa courts of heaven. Okay? So, yun po yung objective natin. Okay? So, Kung every province ay mga pag-raise up tayo ng mga seers, so yung eklesia sa mga probinsya can now do a submission, can seek the counsel of God, and then they can make submission into the courts of heaven. Okay po? So, that's it for this Monday. Thank you very much. At para sa lahat po ng mga nakinig, thank you po sa inyo. May the Lord bless you. I'd like to make some declaration today. Father, we thank you and allow the revelation to be uh, imparted in our spirit, Father God, that we will receive this, Lord, not only for the information of our, of our mind, but for the transformation of our character, for the transformation of our nation, for the transformation of the ecclesia, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being so good to us. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and good night.